Okay, so you can see here the main display of the Planet app. And what you can find down here at the bottom is the date and time display. That's this section down here. And as you can see, it has two main parts. There's an upper part where the date and the time is actually displayed, in this case, March 12th, 2020, 1113 AM. And then the lower display, which is the slider. And you can drag the slider like I'm doing so to adjust the time. So if you look at the time display, uh, right just here, you can see how the time display is moving. So I'll show you that with this pencil. You can see how the time display is moving as I drag the slider. You can also see the sun position move across the map of San Francisco as the time has changed during this day. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see that the daytime, which it is here, 11.57 a.m., is shown by this blue color. And if we go into sunset, sun, uh, this phase of twilight, then we have nighttime. And this color of the slider turns black and the map turns a slightly darker color just to help you uh, appreciate that point. Now, there's five of these slider menus to choose from to help you choose the date and time. This is the hourly slider. If I tap it again, that's the minute slider again. Year, month, day, hour, minute. Very easy to navigate through this way. You can always, to check, pick a precise date and time, you can always long press on the banner display and you get this date and time picker. So you can choose the month, you can choose the day, you can choose the year, however you like to do it. It's really easy to, to choose the date and time that way as well. But there's something I wanted to point out with the daily display, and that is as follows. You look at it carefully, you can see that the phase of the moon is conveniently displayed along the bottom. That's right just here. And in fact, if you look at, let's choose, uh, what is it, May 10th. So let's use May 10th. This is the full moon, day of the full moon. You can see that because if you look very carefully right here on the very bottom, you can see this little yellow bar. And that's the bar denoting the full moon. That's what's shown whenever we have any of the four key phases of the moon. If we go a little bit further along here, you can see on the 18th, we have the uh, first or the third quarter. So you see another yellow bar and so forth. So that's it for the basic functionality of the slider. But let's suppose that you wanted to really fine tune um, the date and time a little bit more precisely than just by using your hand to adjust this. Well, that's where these little plus and minus uh, buttons come in. So if I, right now we're on uh, March, May 18th, so if I press the plus button once like so, we're at May, whoops, we're still at May 18th. Push it again, we're at May 19th, push it again, we're at May 20th, and so forth. And that's particularly useful. Let's go to the minute menu. If we want to dial in a precise time for a moonrise or a moonset with a really long lens, let's say 500 millimeters, so right here, look very carefully, 5.11 uh, p.m. and 30 seconds. Well, if I tap this plus sign uh, once, wow, look at that, 31 seconds. Let's do it again, 32 seconds, 33 seconds. So you can see, you can just dial in that exact second to get that moon exactly where you want it to be. So that's a very, very, very cool feature. Okay, so but there's a lot more, and let's start with the following thing. So you see this calendar icon over here on the right, this little green circle that looks like a calendar. Let's go ahead and tap on that once. And what that does is that brings up this list of events. And events are anything that's of interest to you as a, uh, as a photographer, a landscape photographer. So we have sunrise, we have morning golden hour, noon, moonset, evening golden hour, and so forth. And these have the different times for the different days. So that's a very handy thing you can access just by uh, pressing on this calendar view. You can also, look what happens if we press on these scroll buttons. The uh, scroll button advances the display in the banner to the next event. So here we have evening golden hour. We can press on that again. We have sunset. Again, we have evening blue hour. And we can advance all the way through the different events when the Milky Way is coming along through the night. If we press and hold this, we basically scroll through the different events like so. You can also drag and slide the display banner to advance through the different events this way. Okay, well that's great, but look, there's even more. If we go into this calendar uh, view, look what happens now. This is, I just love this. If you long press on that, you get these four different calendars to help you with your planning. The first one is our important dates calendar, and as you can imagine, that's what, exactly what's shown. So you can see here we have the night of the full moon, the night of the new moon, uh, third quarter, first quarter, we have various meteor showers coming in. And interestingly, we also have the apogee and the perigee of the moon face is shown here. So the way I remember that is apogee and away 
both start with the letter A. And Apogee is just the name given to the point in the moon's orbit when it's the furthest away from the Earth as it's going to be. Perigee is when it's super close, it was, it's as close to the Earth as it's going to be in its orbit. And you may have heard about the supermoon phenomenon, and so when the perigee aligns with the full moon, you have a full moon that's at perigee when it's closest to the Earth, and it's known as a supermoon. So that's where that comes from. Now this next calendar, honestly, this is where I always start my night planning uh, excursions, is with this moon phase calendar. Very, very important, as you know, to plan the type of nightscape you want to get. Are you shooting for a you know, a deep sky Milky Way type nightscape? Are you shooting for a brightly lit foreground? Well, this is the place to start to help you plan that type of event. So what you can see here is the phases of the moon. And again, we have the, the key phases indicated. We have the full moon on the 10th, the small little yellow bar, the new moon on the 25th, with the small little yellow bar and so forth. Now, moving forward, and now by the way, if you wanted to change months, you can do that easily just by sliding or by pressing these little uh, buttons up here to go forwards or backwards in time. Now, the next calendar is the uh, moonless night calendar, and this really relates to the number of hours of uh, moonlessness there is going to be during a given night. And this corresponds, as you can well imagine, with the nights of the new moon or the full moon. So, for example, where we have three stars, we have a lot of um, several hours, eight hours or so, of uh, moonless night. And when we go back to the moon calendar, sure enough, that's when the night, that's centered around the nights of the new moon on the 19th. And correspondingly, when we go to these, when we don't have any dots at all, that corresponds to the nights centered around the full moon, which in this case occurs on October the 5th. Now the last calendar that you can access here it relates to the Milky Way visibility and is really the quality of the viewing of the Milky Way and it's really a combination of both how far above the horizon it is coupled with the moonless calendar you just saw in terms of the quality of the dark skies. So in this case, as you know, in October we don't really have um, the latitude of San Francisco. The core is just barely peeking over the horizon for a short time in the early evening. And that's best only going to be seen during the nights of the new moon. And as you can see here, that's these middle two weeks when we have a hint of a chance of catching a moonless sky. And that's, of course, what you see when you look at the moon phase. But if we were to now go to, let's say we were to pick a summer month, let's say July or August, look what happens here, if we, especially if we go to July. You can see these glorious months in the, <laughs> in the 20th, they were centered around the 20th and the 25th you know that's going to be when the um, new moon is. You can see here, sure enough, the new moon in this case is on the 23rd. That was back in 2017. And that's when the, of course, July is a fantastic uh, time of year for anyone on Earth, regardless of your latitude, to observe the Milky Way because that's when we're in our orbit around the sun when we're uh, facing it. Okay, so that's really it for the uh, different calendars. And the other thing I thought I'd point out if we go back to our events is, before we leave that, is let's suppose we're interested in, uh, let's say, the moon rise or the moon set. In this case, let's go to the moon set. And let's imagine that we're trying to pick the best day for a moon set to happen at a specific time. Well, this is a feature that we like to call the sticky event because we stick the event to be moon set. So here's the moon set at 821 on May 25th. Well, if we advance by one day to the 26th, now it's at 9.31, 8.10.34 on the 27th, and 11.31 on the 20th. And you get the picture. Each day, as you know, the moon sets about an hour later each night. And this is a way to say, if I want to like to very quickly ascertain what's the best day of the week or month for a specific moon set at a specific time, regardless of its phase. Okay, now the other thing I want to draw your attention to now is on the date and time panel is to do with the, the current time. So you see this icon here, which looks like a clock. Anytime you tap that, like so, it sets the time to now. So right now where I am in central time zone, it's 1.07 p.m. You can see that up here in my cell phone. But down here in San Francisco, this is in the Pacific time zone. It's two hours behind us where I am. And so the time is displaying as 11.07. Now it's 11.08. Now this is extremely important when you're planning. And the way to take sure that you're getting this right is you can see the minus 0700 display. That minus 0700 tells you what time zone you're in. That's relative to the Greenwich Mean Time, accounting for daylight saving time. And the Pacific time zone is seven hours behind. And where I am in the central time zone, we're five hours behind. So you can see that if we uh, zoom out like so, 
to my this the zooming feature is also very handy by the way and uh, if we go over here to uh, Minneapolis which is where I'm located at the moment and we place our camera location right there look what happens the times are aligned 108 108 and we're five hours behind Greenwich Mean Time which is fine and everything's good to go so that's an important thing to uh, bear in mind with uh, and you can always by the way you can always adjust that in the whether or not you're showing that if you go to the settings uh, 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 option here and you have this option of, of showing the time zone or not so that's turning the time zones off if we go back we don't see that we just see 109 p.m. Um, but I tend to forget things and I like to be reminded of when I am in a different time zone so I always like to leave my time zone on like that and while we're in the settings menu let me also show you see this next show next previous event button this option right just here what that does if we turn that off is that, that turns off those green uh, uh, scroll button so now you can see that the green scroll buttons are missing from the display so I like to leave those on personally so let's go back to the settings we'll turn those back on there's the settings we'll turn those back on to show the event buttons there we go there we are those are on and we are good to go now before we leave the current time by the way uh, I'd also like to point out that let's imagine we're doing a very precise alignment we've got the moon time lined up into the exact second and we say, okay, we really want to play around with the map, and I don't want to screw that up. So if I just long press on the time like that, we've locked it. We can't change the time. Anything we do with trying to change the date, trying to do this in the banner, the scroll, none of that won't work, which is helpful because that way you won't accidentally <laughs> uh, nudge it out of the correct time as you're doing your adjustments. When you're ready, it's easy to unlock. All you do is you just press this like that, and it unlocks it. All right. Now for the bonus feature, check this out. I really want to show this to you because this is something that's tremendously useful. Let's go back to our hourly uh, display. So if you look right here, we're in November. Now let's actually change this to a different month. Let's go back to, let's say, the summertime. because this, re this relates to the Milky Way visible. You're going to really like this. So here we are in July. Let's go to the hourly display. And if you look very carefully on the top, right just here, you see this green line that green line tells you what time during the night the Milky Way core is really above the horizon or visible and of course as you know July is a great month for that and so as this confirms the Milky Way is above the horizon for most of the middle of the night but if we look down here on the bottom you see this blue line the blue line corresponds to when the moon's above the horizon not good when we're looking for the Milky Way because the bright moonlight will wash out the dimmer lights of the Milky Way stars. So what we want to do is make sure that we pick a date when these uh, two lines, the Milky Way visibility and the moon, uh, these lines don't overlap. So what we would do now is we would go, we could just long press on this and pick a, let's go to, let's say maybe a week or so later. So let's, let's see what the 14th looks like. We say done, come back to this and oh, that's a good date. We don't even see the moon. In fact, if we look carefully, you see the moon, the moon's line is rises sometime during the day and sets right after sunset so the moon setting after sunset uh, this is going to be a wax or a, a waxing crescent phase is fine because in fact that's kind of nice because then we'd be able to catch the crescent moon in the um in the western horizon and uh, let's, let's look at the moon phase yeah there we go oh, that's the day after the new moon look at that so anyway that's a very useful feature just the, the bottom line is make sure these lines do not overlap if you're looking for the milky way core so that's pretty much it. There's a load of information in the date and time panel and planet for photographers. And uh, I hope this helps and uh, good luck with your planning.